So hey guys, uh, so today we're going to see how we will, uh, we can scrape Google Scholar results using Python Beautiful Soup. So let's scrape something for web scraping. How about that? All right, so let's see if we can get this data. Okay, so I'm just going to copy that URL and I already have some sort of boilerplate template over here. I'm going to explain this in a minute. I'm not going to write this, you know, initialization template. And then we'll write the code together. Here we're going to uh, load uh, Beautiful Soup, which is a library uh, we're going to use. Uh, Beautiful Soup 4 and the request library to This is the library we are using to scrape, but this is the library we'll use to actually get the results. Okay. So the headers we're going to pass as user agent string which is a string which identifies our crawler as a web browser, okay? So that <laughs> Google doesn't block us. Ideally, we should rotate this and we'll see about that in a minute. And then you've got the link itself, pass it to request.get function, pass the headers, it will give us a response, response.content as HTML, which will pass to a beautiful soup and ask it to convert to an XML document. And soup object contains a select function which will allow us to select any elements and return the array with them okay so now let's see what is the sort of html we're dealing with here so that we can divide a strategy to to pull this out okay. so i'm looking at okay there you go straight away we can see that all of the results are arranged in these divisions over here okay and what's interesting to me is the class names don't make much sense. Right? Uh, so I'm going to go with something that makes sense. Uh, I think I'll go with this attribute, which is the data lid attribute. And if we can, if anything has a data lid, that makes sense, right? Data lid. And uh, if I can get that, um, I think then inside of that is the data that we want. I like dividing HTML into pieces like this. So let's do that. So the way to address that is, is there anything with the attribute? That's how we say it. Data, I think dash lid, boom, okay. And this will become an array. It comes as an array to us. So what I'll do is I'll preempt that and then I'm gonna for each that array for item in, boom. Oops. I think I've done some mistake here. It is going crazy about this in here. Okay, that's probably because I've not saved it as a, uh, as a Python document yet. So let's just quickly save it. Um, let's call it script uh, gs google scholar.py okay. from item. Sorry, that's for item. No wonder. For item in. All right, so item, I'm going to print here item. And let's actually put a separator as well so that we know when things start and when things end because there will be a lot of gibberish at this moment. Um, I'm just going to clear this previous data. We have Python 3 scrape scrape Google Scholar.py. Bingo. So you can see that the data lid part is present here at every separator that starts and that therein contains, that portion contains a data. Okay. So let's see what we can get. Let's get some actual data now. So let's get into this. And if I can get into this and let me see if I can find the name. Yep. The name is somewhere here in this. This anchor, there you go, it's here. Okay, it's all in the H3 class if you look at the H3 tag. So we can just get the H3 tag because I can't go wrong with that. So what I'll do is I'll just close this here and say item of select, then I'll select the class, not class in this case, H3 tag. Just get the text of it. The text. Uh, this will fail because this will return an array 
So we have to assume it's an array. So that means the first element anyway is the thing that we want. Just going to print it. Let's see what happens. They should get us the names, the titles. There you go. Got it. Okay, so let's see. What else can we get? Can we get the link? Yeah. Uh, links are easiest to get because they always have an anchor uh, element. And so we just have to query the anchor element and the href of it will give us uh, give us the results we want. So I'm just going to call it A. And instead of getting text, we don't need the text. Let's get the attribute a href. Href. Just like so. Okay, let me think. That'll work. I'm so confident. We don't need to worry about it. Let's see if we can. What else is there to get? Not much else left to get. It's just this text. All right. So let's see where this text is. Let's right click, inspect it. Hmm. This whole thing is a text. This whole division here is a text. Google Scholar GS underscore RS whatever that is, right, e is the text, you can just get the entire thing here with the, with the whole thing, so let's just get that, isn't it, it's pretty simple, Google is not trying to make it hard at all, I can tell you that much, mm, to scrape them in this portion of their search at least, so I'm going to call it with the dot command, which means that cast name equals that first item of it, because again it's an array, it should return everything we need. All right, there you go. You got the name. Yeah, sorry, here, yeah, name, the link to the actual thing, and then this whole summary. Okay, that's how you scrape Google Scholar. Google Scholar definitely is going to block you after a while. So, rotate this. There was a video earlier which says rotating user agent screen, strings, how to do it. I've linked it in the description. I will and then you can go check it out and also uh, scale this by using a rotating proxy server because eventually Google will block your IP now what are you going to do. So the best way to overcome that bar none is to simply use a rotating proxy service like this one. I own the service full disclosure pass Google Scholar URL to my API endpoint I'll take care of it and the API endpoint you just pass API key It'll handle all the proxies, two, and two million plus proxies will rotate from that pool, uh, handle changing user agent strings automatically, will automatically retry till you get the data anyway. And uh, we also solve captures and JavaScript rendering. No matter what, you will be able to get your data in almost every single URL in the world, more or less, right? So, Try it, it's free anyway. Thousand API calls free for a month. No credit card required to sign up. Just sign up and get one. All right, and try to see for yourself. And that's how you scrape Google Scholar. Thank you guys.